Hello everyone, and welcome to another beer review. Now today we're on a kind of slightly local beer. This beer's from Bath. And uh, this brewery, they do sell quite a lot of beer to some of the kind of smaller pubs round about the area. So I'm calling it a local beer because it's within its kind of normal kind of uh, local reach from the brewery, even though it is in Bath and we are down in East Devon. But anyway... Um, this is a bit of a strange one. Um, I don't mind this brewery, and uh, I uh, I don't really have an issue with them so much. Some viewers aren't a big fan of them, and don't particularly like their beers and some of the what it feels like their quality of uh, ingredients. I don't mind it too bad, but I'm not looking probably that deep. If, and I've also tried it a lot on um, on draft, so it might come across better on draft than it does in the bottle. I don't really drink it in the bottle, so that's also another thing. So what we're doing today is wild hair, gluten free, and it's gluten free in multiple. They put it on every label, apparently. So this is gluten free. So it is. It's 5%, under £2 a bottle, and of course you've got gluten-free there, you've got gluten-free pale ale, and uh, yeah, so this is what's supposed to be, and this is from basically the Bath Brewery, basically. So it is, and uh, I'm trying to say, there's any spill in the back, I'm trying to see. So of course it's from Bath Ales and there's a little bit, there's just a little section up there just in white, just that little section. So that's the spill you're going to get. And they say, Wild Hair is a flavoursome pale ale that's crisp and fresh with a hint of citrus bitterness. Gluten is removed post-fermentation. So they're removing the gluten after fermentation. There you go. And uh, so like I said, it's 5%, under £2 a bottle. And... Uh, I actually didn't really look to see about the gluten bit. I noticed that afterwards. Right, let's see if we can pull this without creating stupid heads. This might be a good one for aging because aging's not a fan of gluten. Oh my god. Jesus, it pours like a peri water. Look at that. Crazy. I was worried about basically creating a, another hat. Well, there we go. It's very clear. It's very light. Well, it is pale. And uh, it's kind of... Looks like it's carbonated a bit, kind of lager-esque. Smell. Getting a bit of grain. Not really getting malt. Not really getting hops. Not really getting much. Just... Getting... Light green smells almost kind of lager esque, so it is, and, and it looks quite lager esque as well. But yeah, it doesn't smell like an ale, so it doesn't. It smells more kind of lagerish, so it does. As, as if lagerish was was actually a proper word. Oh, anyway, <laughs> Jesus, the more I smell it, the more I get worried. So. Let's stop smelling it and let's see what it tastes like. Christ, that's lucky. There's no flavour there. Yeah, they maybe took the gluten out, but they took everything else out of it. Citrus bitterness. Where? There was a, there was almost a hint of bitterness there, almost a little accent. And you think, oh, here it comes. And it, no. You know, if you ever get that sensation when you feel you're going to sneeze and you're all in kind of preparation to try to sneeze, and, like, and it just goes away. That's what it's like drinking this. They're just little accent flavours, you think, oh, here it comes, here it comes, and it's like, no. It's 
a beer that doesn't really taste of anything, but it has little accents appearing now and again to kind of give you the impression that, oh, here we go, it's going to kick off, here we go, here we go, and it's like, no. And look at it. Flat as a witch's tip. I mean, I'm not even going to break down the flavour profiles here because I would struggle. It's lacking. It really is lacking in flavour. I've tasted non-alcoholic beers with more flavour and more character. This is just... I suppose there's maybe a slight, ever so slight accent of pithiness right at the very end of the aftertaste. But saying there was really nothing else really in the aftertaste. In fact, from front to back, there really isn't anything there at all to identify, apart from it tastes like off water. Front of the mouth, not really getting malt. No grain. You may be getting a hint of grain in the mid-tongue. There's no real kind of sweetness there, no maltiness. There's definitely nothing really coming from the hops. So you're getting no floralness, no citrusness, nothing. No citrus flavours whatsoever, really. It gets into the kind of aftertaste and there's absolutely nothing there. Nothing. You might as well be breathing in here. And then just when you finally swallow, you're just getting little accents of maybe it could be kind of construed as slightly kind of citrus pithiness. But there's not enough there to even really say, oh yeah, I, will, I was sure it's, you're starting to think, was I dreaming it? So whatever they've done to take the, the gluten out of it, they've dragged all the bloody flavour out of it as well. That's if it was there in the first place. I can't comment to see whether it was there in the first place and they've dragged it out with the gluten kind of extraction process or maybe it just wasn't there in the first place. So No, there's nothing I can really say about that. Maybe a slight hint of floral, just a ever so slight, kind of slight rosy accent. I'm really, I'm clutching at straws here. Right, out of time, what would I give it? Well, there's nothing there to score, to be totally honest. If average is five, then it's well below average because it's just not delivering anything. So, flavour wise, no. Is it appealing to look at? Is it nicely brewed? Well, it might have been, but after the extraction process of the gluten, there's not really much, and it's acting more like a really bad brewed lager, to be totally honest. Um, oh, out of 10, what would I give this? Right, four would just be below average, and um, that's too high. Three, well, there's got to be some attributes that you like about it and there's nothing really there to like, apart from maybe the colour. Do you like the colour? Do you, do you give it a, I'll give it a point for a colour and give it a point for basically being gluten-free because apparently that's important to people. And I suppose if you're gluten intolerant, then yeah, great, you can be cock a hoop over that. If you're not gluten intolerant, you're thinking, oh, that's a bloody disaster. So... Yeah, gets a point for the colour, then clarity, and gets a point for being gluten-free. So there you go, 2 out of 10. That's the best I can give it, because I can't give it anything more. I can't give it a point for flavour, because there isn't any. I can't give it a, a point for mouthfeel, because it's not that great. And I can't give it a point for it looking appealing, or even looking as if it's interested, because it bloody doesn't, isn't it? Right, so 2 out of 10. Would I recommend it? No. Unless you want a beer that doesn't taste of anything and uh, and gluten free, so if you want a gluten free beer that doesn't taste of anything, this is right up your street. You should be cocker, <laughs> and I would say get in there quick because I'm sure it's probably flying off the shelves. If you want a beer with flavour, then this isn't for you, whether you're gluten intolerant or not. So really, I can't recommend it. I would say avoid. As much as possible, unless you are gluten intolerant and you're looking for something to drink that's got alcohol in it. 
and that doesn't have a button. And if that was the case, I'd probably point you towards uh, maybe a spirit, because during the distillation process and everything else, the gluten won't be there. The gluten's actually have a, a gluten plant. Most distillers have a gluten plant. And what they do is extract the gluten so and the starch at the same time. And it's a byproduct of whiskey production and other spirit production that they sell the starch off to the food industry to make kind of your corn snacks, like your watsits and your quavers and all that type of stuff. So it's a very kind of what we call pure starch, which uh, a lot of the kind of uh, snack manufacturers like and uh, are looking for and they pay good money for. So go for a vodka or a gin or a, or a whiskey if you want proper gluten free because that's a big part of the production of these spirits now is to basically get the gluten the hell out of there because it doesn't add anything to the drink whatsoever so they don't need it. In fact it's more of a problem for distillation to try and filter it out so they actually have it and the reason why I know this is because my dad was a technical director for William Grants and uh, they spent a lot of money and he spent a lot of time designing the gluten plant at the distilleries and uh, to extract that as a byproduct because they didn't need it and they didn't want it but they knew it was a good market for it so if they could basically extract it and uh, sell it then they could get good money which again just boosted profits and everything else so if you're looking for a good quality flavoursome gluten free alcohol options then go for spirits and don't bother for this so it's 2 out of 10 thanks for watching Cheers, and bye.